Welcome back everybody to the CSGO News episode. I hope you guys all enjoy some big rumors and speculation out there as the potential changes coming to the CSGO scene. So I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first big story though. All around Cold Zero brought to us by Nell and some other leakers out there. I'll show you guys those sources and they will be linked down below as well. Here's Nell's report on screen about Cold Zero reportedly leaving the MBR roster in the future after the major in September. So of course the face of major in September coming up here. Apparently that could be his last matches with the MBR roster as Cold Zero wants to leave that roster and join up with someone else. Now it could be, uh, of course there's many potentials out there. Obviously Liquid he could join up with Taco over there. Maybe even Mouse Sports. We had Chris J doing some fun stuff on his stream where Mouse Sports was maybe an option for him. It seemed like more of a troll. But obviously many teams out there could use Cold Zero on their roster and a lot of allegations right now as to what is actually the problem on that roster. We've seen the past three to four months ever since 2E2K joined. Maybe an IGL role. Maybe a leadership role that they just couldn't really fill. We have Fallen and, and him Cold Zero going back and forth and taking IGL on separate maps and now trying to switch back to one main IGL and obviously some issues going on with the squad right now with recent results so it does seem likely after the face of major September Cold Zero might leave that roster entirely and what was actually once going to be a made in Brazil roster seems to be shifting towards a made in American roster as other reports out there by Double Tap do seem to actually point to a Cloud9 roster change as well and it could lead to Tarek actually join his former teammate in Stewie 2K on that MBR roster. Now of course that would actually not be in place of Cold Cold Zero, and apparently it would be though to replace Bolts on that MBR roster. Now it's been no historical, you know, inaccuracy to say that Bolts is probably the least performing of all those guys on that team. Probably the most underwhelming player. Not to say he's not a good player, but still he'd be the most obvious replacement on that team. The really big question though going forward is who would actually become their IGL. So as of right now, rumors do point to this, guys. The MBR roster will stick with the trio until after the face of Major because they have to. They need Cold Zero, they need Fallen and Fur to actually have that three-man majority to retain that spot. After the major though, it's all up in the air as to what could happen, but currently before the major, we could see a Cloud9 roster change, which would send Tarek to join up with Stewie2K and that trio of Fallen, Fur, and Cold Zera to actually be the MBR roster for the face at major, and it would leave Cloud9 in absolute shambles. Because we are well aware of the struggles that the Cloud9 roster is having right now, them of course switching back between IGLs and Tarek eventually being that one after they bench FNS, bringing him in to be the IGL, and he just did not work out well at all, and so it could leave Cloud9 without not only a leader but also an IGL in general if Tarek does decide to leave and who knows what they would do maybe pulling like a nothing or anyone else out there who's willing to IGL for that team because as we're going through it right now the minors are almost all done or at least starting it means that a lot of players out there are wrapped up and they cannot actually compete on any other teams out there once you compete in a minor with one team you can't really compete in a major with another so the rules are really going to hold some players back from competing on cloud nine and they could actually be forced to bring back FNS on that roster but who else would fill the holes on that team we really have no answers right now. We're going to wait and see what happens, but it does seem that Tarek wants to leave Cloud9 and join up with Stewie2K on MBR, and they would be replacing apparently Bolts on that roster. So big changes coming soon. Everyone hunkered down, and it's going to be a long month here as we see what changes happen in North America, and we could see even even further hurting of these North American teams that are already struggling. But for those of you guys who are curious exactly what the problem is as well, we also had Alexi. Alexi is actually Simple's brother. He's also the creative, uh, the, co the content director as well as mainly he's actually the creative director on that Navi line up of the Navi staff over there and also more well known as being Symbol's brother. He got the job I think at some point last year before anyone else broke the news. Actually about three to four hours before anyone else, any other sources out there had news about this. He did post this to his Facebook and it does say kind of a bad translation there. It's supposed to say though insane fallen kicked Cold Zera from the team. So who knows what information, what player talk he had heard but apparently it wasn't actually according to his sources Cold Zera who wanted to leave. It was actually Fallen's choice who wants to eventually kick Cold Zera. So that could be that conflict of IGL. They've been switching back and forth. Maybe a conflict between the two of them as well as to what they want the direction of the team to be. But it does seem for the future, MeBR is going to be uh, making some changes out there. Yes, they'll still be a Brazilian majority for the time being. It's just very ironic to see, uh, obviously, them transitioning from Immortals, uh, for, of course, from SK to uh, to uh, Immortals to MeBR, made in Brazil. And now the roster could be changing and actually losing more of its Brazilian players. And also in very big news, we actually have North making a slight roster change. They're going to have a new stand-in player and that will be Mixwell. Now, Mixwell took to Twitter to clarify he'll be a stand-in player for only Dreamhack Valencia actually going to be in his home country so very cool to see he'll have a home crowd there and the first time we'll actually see Mixwell performing on a top stage ever since his time with his French squad but again I cannot wait to see this guy play but on top of that he made sure to clarify like in the Cloud9 situation he he clarified back then that he did not want to play for a North American team he was there Cloud9 in a stand-in player but in the same instance he says he's going to be a stand-in player for Team North for their academy member who was actually on trial that's actually Mertz and that will be it so I kind of got excited 
excited when North first posted about this. They seem to be thinking about Mixwell as a long-term option. Mixwell kind of negates that and says it's going to be a short-term play, only as a stand-in player for this time being at DreamHack Valencia. But it does seem as well North is going to be trying to go for a full international roster, whatever that means nowadays. But apparently, it's not going to be merch for the long-term future. And this is kind of their, their way of trialing someone else for now. But it does not seem to be permanent, although we will get to see Mixwell play at DreamHack Valencia, which I am certainly excited about. And if anyone still gets excited about Mike Lilly new teams, now again, I, I love this guy. I've had to clarify that in the past. I'm not trying to put any hate on him, but he is, again, setting records out there, not only for new teams, but new rosters in general. It was actually Digital Chaos, their latest sponsor of that team with him and Pronax. Last week, they got rid of two players. One was Pith and one was Benny, who you'd say is pretty much a, a big downgrade to get rid of someone like Pith, but they've already replaced the entire roster. People, myself included, thought the entire roster would disband, and they've actually announced a brand new roster once again. And the only thing really keeping me from actually saying these guys are only going to be a Mountain Dew League team at best is they've actually brought in some very interesting talent, which does have some cohesiveness. One of them being Freddie Frog and his brother Relaxa. Uh, Michael Lilly has a past with playing with Freddie Frog that the Swedish players have played together several times in the past. And alongside that team chemistry wise, and it is very cool to see as well if you guys notice the pictures there, Relaxa and Freddie Frog are actually twin brothers. So that's very cool to see. Something we've actually rarely, rarely seen in the CSGO scene in general, especially at this level. And alongside that, their fifth member will be Plesson, who I think they actually had some, uh, some contact with in the past as well. So it will be Mike Lilly, Pronax, Plesson, and the twin brothers running out the roster guys in Mountain Dew League. They've actually gotten some, some decent wins in that so far. And again, another reason I want to say that I actually have some potential for these guys in the future. Now, they might just be a really good Mountain Dew League team at best, but still, they also have two things. One is financial backing, which is a big thing in the pro scene right now. And alongside that, another important thing is they actually have a coach in Devil Walk. Former Fnatic and Optic coach Devil Walk has actually joined this team. So I give them some potential to actually make some, some, some noise in Mountain Dew League. Unfortunately enough for them though, this this season of Mountain Dew League is actually not for an EPL spot. So we're going to have to wait some time to see what these guys can develop into and they have plenty of time to practice and let's hope this Mike Lilly team, I think his 22nd team, actually lasts this time. And then some very funny and I guess you could say lighthearted news. We actually had a smaller HP Omen qualifier. I think it was in the UK scene. We had a team known as Chet's Esports play against another team known as Buzzkill and very funnily enough it was actually a best of three series to go on in the qualifier itself and Chet's Esports after map one actually beat the team 16 to 11. Now it was actually come to their attention after the match was played out that the team had been handed a disqualification for I think it was actually uh, inappropriate language around admins. Now it came to our full attention as to what was actually said around the admins. I, I want to clarify as well the situation has been seemingly resolved. Face it Mikey did respond to the reddit post itself and they're trying to find a solution for this team because Chet's Esport they won map one but the team they played against team Buzzkill actually moved on throughout the qualifier. So they're trying to find out a solution right now and Face it Mikey himself did clarify the situation was poorly handled by Face It Admins because apparently the joke that was said or the line that was said was actually not said directed towards anyone. It was more of a conversational piece between teammates and not directed at any of the admins. But apparently, quote unquote, the line that was said was, you can suck my left nut. Now, there's a lot of jokes about there about what was actually said and, of course, the context around that. But that's apparently what was giving the team a disqualification. So face it is on the case, guys. And apparently, you can suck my left nut is not a, supposed to be a disqualification. So in the future, be careful with your words, teams out there. And maybe just watch what you're saying around uh, any admins. But the main situation as well is but apparently the admin let the guys play out the entire game. And not until after their first map where they actually won the map did the face it admin come back in and say, hey, by the way, you've been disqualified. You will not I will not suck your nut. And there's a small news out there for all you Face It users. Speaking of Face It, they actually are now compatible with Panorama UI, so it's great to see they're they're fastly adapting. I'm not really sure about ESCA updates right now for other uh, third party third party client services out there, but Face It will be compatible for the time being. Now we're still finding glitches out there for Panorama UI, some smaller ones throughout. Then I'm sure they'll be worked out slowly. But it's really cool to see eventually if everyone's going to actually going to kind of turn over to this system and actually enjoy it. So we're going to wait for some bigger updates out there. I think the hype is slowly already dying out. For Panorama UI. I know it's a great thing, but also thank you guys for all the comments uh, in the section comment section down below. A lot of you guys did actually make sure to clarify there's not necessarily a large FPS boost in competitive match or matchmaking uh, with the new Panorama UI, but you're getting a lot more consistent frames or frames per second. So that's obviously a great thing, and hopefully more updates coming soon for the platform itself. But it's great to see everyone having a great response so far to Panorama UI. Now, very lastly for today's episode of CSK News, kind of a conversational piece for all of you guys out there who love the comment section. I do also
also want to clarify, I always read pretty much every single comment out there. I can't reply to everyone, but thank you guys for all of you guys who do leave comments about these kind of sections or segments out there. And this is all about Navi's victory and, of course, their IGL right now, Zeus. Apparently, of course, Navi winning their third straight title, our third straight event. They actually won the CSGO Asian Championships. They won Star Series Season 5. And now, of course, their latest victory at ESO Clone. Very impressive. Although there's their doubters out there that have not faced the best of the best talent. They've avoided some of the top teams out there. But nonetheless, the team has been performing very well, especially in two fraggers out there. And of course, that is simple and electronic. And it kind of takes away from other players out there. In this case, Zeus, who's been notably one of the one of the better IGLs out there, but also notably one of the worst fragging IGLs in the game to date, which might have prompted Thorne to tweet out this at the time of their victory. Now, of course, uh, a lot of uh, hate going Thorne's way, a lot of hate going both ways here, as uh, we did have Zeus respond with this tweet on screen. A very, very fiery tweet, which Thorne did retweet as well. Over 13,000 favorites at the point of me recording this, which is a pretty insane response, but I want to ask you guys the main question. Of course, Zeus's tweet got a lot more attention, a lot more favorites, because, of course, uh, Navi's doing a great job right now. A lot of us still have no idea the, the overall, what actually it takes to be an IGL in game. I, myself, other analysts out there who have never played the game of CSGO at that kind of level, really probably failed to understand what it takes to be an IGL, but it is actually very obvious that Zeus is one of the worst fragging IGLs out there. So what is your take on this, guys? Is Thorin correct here? Is Zeus correct here? Are they both really good points? I thought it was kind of crazy to read the responses to this because half the responses were, a lot of the responses obviously targeting Thorin. And he's actually said a lot of things in the past that have been kind of borderline, very, very, obviously very edgy. He kind of trying to, trying to dictate conversations. He tries to pull out responses. In this case, he does a very good, very good job doing it. But he also, in the end, really, really makes some very good points here. So leave a comment down below what you guys think about that. I love kind of opening up conversation pieces. And maybe in the future of CSGO News, we'll kind of try and do that every, every once in a while in the episodes. We'll kind of open up conversational moments where you guys can leave comments down below on what your thoughts are. As always, I hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all very shortly with some more episodes of CSGO News. I hope you guys all enjoy. As always, my name is Jigma like you, and I will see you all then. Goodbye, guys.